Welcome to this sailing theory tutorial. My name is Julian. The topic of this video is sail shape. In this video, we're going to talk generally about the shape of a sail. Then we're going to move on to defining sail shape in terms of some specific parameters. In a future video, we'll talk about how a sailmaker puts shape into a sail. We'll have a discussion about various sail materials and what causes sail degradation. We're going to talk about how we as sailors can control our sail shape, and we're going to talk about the effects of various sail controls in particular. So before we get too deep into this, we need to talk about viewing a sail. As we know, sails are 3D objects. They have to be, because they exist in our 3D world. But we can look at 3D objects as if they're 2D objects. If we look at them, from the side, the back, and the top. Now when we're talking about sail shape in this video, for the most part, we're going to be dealing with viewing a sail from the top. More specifically, we're actually going to be dealing with what's called a section view. And a section view is when you take a look at something as if you had cut it, in this case we're going to say along my purple line, and you view it in the direction of the arrows on that line. So a section through the sail where I just drew that line would have the same length that it does down there, and it might look something like this. To keep things simple, we're going to treat our sails for now as if they have only one section shape. And when we're talking about the shape, we're just going to be talking about a diagram like this. And we can forget for a moment about the side, the back, and the other top view. So now I'll ask you a general question. What do sails look like? Do they look flat or do they look curved? Most of us who have been around sailboats before know that they don't look flat and that sails have a certain curvature to them. So we could say that they look curved. Why do they look curved though? And I can hear some of you saying, they're curved so that they'll generate lift. But I've got to tell you, hold it right there. That's not quite it. The fact is that a flat object in a flow will still generate some lift and some drag. And if you don't believe me, Try to hold on to a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood the next time it's really windy outside. You'll see what I mean. So we've established that a flat plate would still generate lift. But the fact is that a curved sail does it better. So when we put curvature in our sails, they do a better job pushing our boats forward. They give us more lift and less drag. So let's talk a little bit about why that might be. The first reason I'd like to give you why curved sails are beneficial is that forces due to pressure act perpendicular to a surface. So we know that our sails experience high and low pressure on the leeward and windward sides. We can imagine those pressures as if they're small little forces spread out over the surface and they all point perpendicular to the surface. If I draw in some arrows to represent the pressure force, we can see that the big force of pressure arrow that I'm drawing in orange is going to have essentially the same direction as the little arrows that come off of the surface. Because the sail has some curvature to it, some of those small arrows are pointing forward and some of those small arrows are pointing further backwards. The net result there though is that the force of pressure is going to have a different angle compared to what it would if it was flat like a board. The second reason that I'd like to give you is that streamlines don't like to take sharp corners. So as we can see, if we had a flow that was approaching over here towards a flat plate, as it comes around the leading edge of the plate, it would have to take a very sharp corner to follow that straight edge. What would be more likely to happen instead of the flow being able to follow the plate is that it would separate a little bit at the leading edge 
and then sometime later it would come back and reattach near the back of the plate. Remember from my separation and stall video, when the flow separates it has a negative effect on the efficiency of the airfoil. If we look at the curved sail instead, what we can see is that the leading edge is actually facing closer to the same direction as the flow. So it doesn't have to take quite as sharp a turn as it starts to adjust to follow the side of the airfoil. When there's a smoother transition there, there's less chance of separation. And that makes our sails work better. So the general shape of a sail then is to have some curvature near the front and a relatively straight section near the back. And I want to illustrate as well for you why we want the curvature up near the front. So here I've drawn three examples that go from good to worse to not so good. In the first example, we have the curvature up near the front and we can see that the small little pressure arrows near the front of the sail, where there's the most low pressure sucking the sail forward, those arrows are actually pointed slightly forward. What that does is pull the force of pressure arrow a little bit farther forward too. And so what we could say is that the best sail is definitely going to have its curvature near the front. A worse looking sail has its curvature distributed all the way through the sail, so it's kind of C-shaped. In a sail like that, we would have more of the pressure arrows facing farther backwards all the way along the sail. And what that's going to result in is a force of pressure on the sail that's pulling the sail a little bit farther backwards and a little bit more to leeward. In a sail that's not doing so well, we basically have a sail that's configured in reverse. It's flat at the front and it's curved at the back. If your sail has curvature at the back, then as it takes that turn at the back, you're going to have pressure arrows that are sucking backwards on the sail like this. And when that happens, it's going to cause the force of pressure to aim quite far backwards indeed. And that would not be a good situation because if the force is pushing backwards, what that means is that that force is made up mostly of drag and less of lift. So I'd like to take a step towards formalizing the way that we talk about sail shape. And we're going to do that by naming a few parameters. So I've put some elements on this diagram of a sail down here, and I'm going to fill in the labels one by one and we're going to talk a little bit about what they mean. So the first thing we're going to talk about is this magenta dot right here. And that dot is denoting the leading edge of the sail. Now the leading edge of the sail is the first part of the sail that comes in contact with flow. If the wind was blowing this way, it would come across the leading edge first. The next part we can talk about is the trailing edge, which is in purple back here. If the flow stays attached all the way from the leading edge to the trailing edge, that's where it's going to leave the sail. The trailing edge corresponds basically to the leech of your sail, and the leading edge corresponds basically to the luff of your sail. Next. I'd like to label this orange line here. It connects the leading edge to the trailing edge, and it's called the cord line. So the cord line is just a straight line between the front and back of the sail. The length of the cord line is called the cord length. And I've drawn it in red here. Now this dot that I've drawn in light blue is a special point on the sail. It's the point of maximum draft. And sometimes it's just referred to as the draft. The point of maximum draft is the point on the sail that has the farthest distance from the cord line. So it, you can actually think of the draft as the depth of your sail. In dark blue, we're going to label the draft depth. So these two things are linked, but they're not the same thing. 
there's the draft, which is the point of maximum draft in the sail. And then there's the draft depth, which is the actual distance between the chord line and the point. The last parameter that I want to talk about is what I've drawn in yellow here. And it measures the distance along the chord line from the leading edge of the sail to the point of maximum draft. We can call that the draft position. And the draft position is often referred to as a percentage of the chord length. So if we can keep these parameters straight in our heads, it'll help us when we're talking about sail shape. Because later in another video, we'll talk about how sail controls can affect the shape of the sail. And we're going to refer back to these parameters. There's another term that I'd like to introduce you guys to as well, and it's called camber. Camber refers to the relative curvature of the two surfaces of an airfoil. So when we're talking about curvature, it can either be convex or concave. And for sails, because they're so thin, one side of the sail is basically the exact opposite of the surface of the other side of the sail. And so they're just about as cambered as you can get. That's a characteristic of thin airfoils or sails. One more term that we're going to talk about is what's called the camber line. So in a thick airfoil, the camber line would be something that averages both of the surfaces of the sail, and it's going to pass somewhere along the middle of the sail. But it won't be straight like the cord line. It'll be curved. For a sail, again because it's so thin, the camber line is actually the sail. And so we only have to draw one line and it represents the whole airfoil. If we draw the section view of a sail, we're basically drawing the camber line of that airfoil. So far, all of the parameters that we've talked about have been in two dimensions, looking at that section view of the sail. There is, however, one important 3D parameter that I think is worth introducing at this point. That parameter is called sail twist or sometimes it's referred to as the twist angle. To talk about sail twist, because it's in 3D, we actually need to look at all three of these views. So I'll remind you again that we have a side, a back, and a top view. So it's actually pretty common for sail makers to put stripes on sails that they're making. And they put those stripes on to help visualize the curvature of the sail when you're looking up into the sail. Those stripes are called draft stripes. They'd usually all be the same color, but in this diagram, I made a blue one at the bottom, an orange one in the middle, and a green one at the top. And what we're gonna do is we're going to look at how the angle changes from the blue to the orange to the green. So you could imagine that I could draw a line that connects each end of that stripe at the top, the middle, and the bottom. But this is kind of boring, because when we look at it from the side, these lines are mostly parallel. We're going to see the same thing if we look at them from the back, at the bottom, in the middle, and at the top. Again, they're roughly parallel. It gets really interesting though if we take a look at the angle of the lines at the top, in the middle, and at the bottom, in the top view. And so the top view is going to be the most useful view when we're talking about sail twist in terms of how we can draw it on paper. So to draw it on paper, when I'm talking about the twist angle, what I'm talking about is the difference as you go up the sail in the angle that we get in this point right here between those lines. We would say that the greater the angle difference, from the bottom to 
to the top. the more twisted the sail is. So this sail would actually be pretty twisted indeed. Okay, so if you had the bird's eye view of a sail, that's how you would determine whether it's twisted. Now, of course, we don't have bird's eye views of our sails if we're sailing in a boat or if we're coaching and we're in a motorboat. We just don't have a bird's eye view. Of course, you could make the argument though that if you're a sailor in a boat and you're sitting underneath the boom, you have a fisheye view, maybe? So it would be a bottom view, not a top view, but you'd be able to see the angle change just the same. But another view that's going to be pretty useful to us is the back view. And I erase those lines because they're crowding up the view. But if we were looking at a sail from the back facing forwards, we could determine if it's twisted by tracing the line that is the leech. And seeing whether it's more open at the top and more closed at the bottom. We could say then that the bigger the difference in opening from the top to the bottom, the more twisted a sail is. So the top view gives us an idea of what twist is, and it kind of gives us a sense of how that term came about. And the back view is going to be a useful view for us if we're actually trying to determine how twisted a sail is. So the last thing I want to do is actually use the side view, and we're going to use it for a couple of sections that we're going to make. So I want to make a section through that top, through that middle, and lastly, through that bottom line that I drew. So if I draw three sections, what I would expect to see in a twisted sail is that the angle of attack of the sail is going to increase as we move down the sail. On the other hand, if the sail was not twisted, I would expect to see the angle of attack stay the same as we move down the sail. So to review, so far we've talked about how we want the sail to be curved, because we think that a curved sail will do a better job than a flat plate in terms of making us lift and reducing our drag. The reason for that has to do with the direction that the force arrows are going to come off of the sail when we add curvature to it, and also because we want to prevent separation. We also defined a number of parameters in the sail, such as the leading edge, the trailing edge, the draft depth, the point of maximum draft, the draft position, the cord line, the cord length, and we defined the term camber. Finally, we talked about sail twist, how it appears from the back and the top, and what it would look like if we made cuts through the sail in different locations. So this is going to conclude my sailing theory tutorial, which is an introduction to sail shape. Thank you for watching, and be sure to keep an eye out for my future videos that might expand this topic further.